Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this Cabinet meeting on the 8th of August 2024. Um, a reminder to everyone that the meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. I feel we need to start this meeting by um, just a small reflection on what happened in Tamworth on, on Sunday evening and just to reiterate to everyone how, how saddened we are and how much we condemn the actions of the people that were there. It's not something we want to see in Tamworth and the whole council will be working to do what it can to make sure that this kind of thing isn't welcomed in Tamworth and doesn't happen again. Um, on to the meeting then. I have apologies from Sarah Daniel. I don't think there's any more apologies. Um, the minutes, item two, the minutes. The minutes of the previous meeting held on the 18th of July are here for approval. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Thank you. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Um, are there any declarations of interest anybody wants to raise at this point? No? Thank you. Item four is question time and we haven't received any questions. Item five is matters referred to the cabinet in accordance with the overview and scrutiny procedures. We do have a matter that has been referred from scrutiny, but we're going to take that as we go through the agenda. And thank you to Councillor Couchman for coming along for that. So on to item six, which is the disabled adaptions policy and Councillor Clark will talk us through this. Do you want me to go through the entire executive summary? However you see fit. I'll presume it's been read. It's uh, presume it's read then. Just to say that this is a, a fantastic piece of work by Lucy and the team and by Paul. Um, it puts us in really good stead to move forward. Um, and yeah, I'd like to to move it. Unless any, Paul's got anything to add. Want to make some comments, Paul? Uh, no, other than to sort of say, I think you know it's important uh, that we get this sorted so that we've got that formal policy in place and there are people now who do need some of the uh, discretionary grants that are part of that policy so it's, you know I think it'd be very good to get that through and uh, important for those people. Do you have any questions for Ben? No? Um, can I just say how pleased I am about this piece of work? It, we know that our disabled facilities program wasn't working very well before and we're really grateful for the work that has been done to bring it up to speed. I know there's an awful lot more to be done but this does go, go some way to getting us on the right track so thank you for that. So be, before us we have the recommendations are approve and adopt the assistance provided by the council under the draft housing policy at appendix A. Approve and adopt the inclusion of the various discretionary schemes. Approve and adopt the utilisation of the policy to cover council adaptations until such time as a separate policy can be submitted. And approve and adopt the interim policy position statement for council adaptations at Appendix B for adoption. Can I have a mover and a seconder? Uh, all those in favour? Thank you very much. So item seven then is the annual garden waste subscription charge. And I'm now going to pass over to Councillor Couchman, the Chair of Infrastructure, Safety and Growth, to tell us what happened at her committee. Thank you, Chair. Um, there was a long discussion, um, and it's on the executive summary if you if you got a copy of this. So you, you've all seen it, yeah? Um, as a result of uh, our deliberations, um, it, was recommend it was recommended to you tonight that we ask you to defer the increase until a full breakdown of costs has been provided and discussed at the next uh, Infrastructure Safety and Growth Committee on its 22nd of August meeting, and then we would make a decision for you uh, to pass on, a suggestion for you to pass on for your next Cabinet meeting at the end of the month. Um, and also it was agreed that each year under delegated powers the cabinet member responsible for waste services will approve the price increase in consultation with the executive director organization and the council's section 151 officer before being ratified by cabinet now this was put in because 
with the previous administration, um, the previous leader of the council ex ex explained to us on the all member briefing on Monday evening that he had agreed along with the previous chief exec to um, take £60,000 from reserves in order to keep the payment for uh, the green bin at £36. There was nowhere when I looked and I asked um, Mrs Goodwin to look as well where we could find where that was actually minuted in any of our documentation and we feel that that isn't good governance we're not for one instance um, maligning either of those two gentlemen what we're saying is that we should be open and transparent so that's why it should go to cabinet um, and that that's the reason the rationale behind that we also then um, removed um, the third point uh, recommendation because as it was pointed out Every year, the, the difference might not be CPI, it might be more than CPI, or it might be less than CPI. So therefore, one in, in the recommendation two, when the cabinet member and the officer decides what it's going to be, it could be more or less. So that resolution number three fell. I hope that's clear. Thank you for that, Marion. Um, I was actually at your meeting yesterday and I found it very interesting the way people were questioning things and for me when I left the meeting it was yes that's how scrutiny should work people weren't just nodding it through they were quite happy to to say I, I can't see all all the evidence for doing this and consequently uh, personally I'm quite happy with those recommendations that you put forward um, Councillor Foster it's your portfolio <laughs> it's not my fault though <laughs> yeah th thank you for that I, I, I'm, I'm uh, grateful for um, Councillor Couchman for her work and efforts in this area uh, one of the things that when I first when we first started to look at you know this issue the is the biggest issue is the, the there was the um, issue around governance um, th because there was Basically, there was none. Uh, so um, I'm fully supportive of these recommendations, and I'm very grateful for Marion for the work she's done. Um, and I think uh, it's the right move. You know, we we need to be transparent. We need to be open. The public needs to understand how we make these decisions. Um, and so it's only right and proper that um, you know we go down this route. And I sat in the meeting uh, of ISAG. Um, it's the first scrutiny meeting I've sat in since becoming a councillor again. And I thought it was excellent. You know, it was open and honest. People were putting, you know, making proper points. They weren't um, making political points or point scoring, which is exactly how it should be. So I was very pleased at that. And I'm, I'm supportive of these two recommendations. Thank you. Um, does anyone else wish to speak? Yes, no, that's true. It was a good meeting, it was a good chair, that's what I'm going to say. Um, but also, I just wonder if in the full breakdown of costs, we can make sure that we add, I don't know who I'm asking, <laughs> we can make sure we add if we are um, asking for the price increase to be checked, if we can just make sure we include the resource implications on the annual check of the price, the CPI index price increase. Um, because that seems like, I don't know how long that takes for an executive to check a price, but it, it seems important to make sure that's included so we're not going back into deficit. And the other thing, I love the idea of direct debit payments. I think it mitigates some of the risks of increasing the price, and I wonder who, who has to check that and if we can make sure that that's also included in that first review. That's, that's all. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Yeah, I just want to make one point. Uh, if you guys aren't provided with enough information, you feel like um, that you can't effectively um, scrutinise um, what's in front of you, definitely uh, this is the best decision uh, to defer it until you have all the information so you're able to actually be an effective committee. So. If I could just respond, I think from le one of the learning curves we had last night is that we need to make sure that whenever anything comes to a scrutiny committee that involves costing, that is, we've got to have detailed costings. 
Thank you. Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you, Councillor Couchman, for last night. Um, it was a good scrutiny. Um, I, did, I was challenged a lot on the governance arrangements for the joint way service, and I was offered some support. And coming, um, I think, Chair asked for me to present back to scrutiny the governance arrangements made clear to. Um, scrutiny so that we are clear going forward so arrangements and decisions are very open and transparent but I did want to make the point that the disc one of the discussions last night was around fees and charges being um, delegated and Councillor Ropes in particular was quite vociferous around the delegation of um, fees and charges and in discussion with the section 151 officer today I was um, it was pointed out to me that within the constitution the, it is very clear that the executive director of finance and where necessary the portfolio holder can set fees charges rents and income levels um, that they are that is clear and that is within set within the constitution now i understand the constitution will be reviewed going forward but that actually is very clear and that is one of the delegations um, so when i do my report back to an update back to scrutiny i will make that clear um, and we are now working together with Litchfield to try and get those fees, the full cost recovery fees, because we hadn't got that data. So I accepted uh, that criticism and uh, we will put that right in the next report. Thank you. I, I think with this um, service, it, it is a work in progress, isn't it? We're finding out a lot of things that we didn't know. and. It, it will take time, but we're getting there. We're asking the right questions, so that's important. Um, just interject, yes, sorry, sir. Chair. Um, from what Mrs Goodwin's just said, there was another item that we looked at last night, which was under confidential. Um, but the point was raised then about governance and about how, it, how the thing is put together. And I just wanted to raise it so that Cabinet <clears throat> was aware, pardon me, um, that we have asked for a proper governance report on that score. And from what Mrs Goodwin's just said, I think you'll find that in the future you'll get a recommendation that some of that um, transparency does need to be changed in the Constitution. Thank you, everyone. Is everyone... Yeah, Dave. Yeah, I'd just like to also just... Uh, remind people that you know before we were really working with Litchfield District Council you know we've got people we've got um, meetings set up now we're building those relationships relationships up I'm going to meet my counterpart over there uh, in Litchfield next week um, hopefully uh, that will be at the depot so I can see the workings and whatever um, and I think these are all positive moves to make sure that we you know we don't find ourselves in the position we found ourselves ourselves in uh, earlier last month when we really were not in a very good place at all to be honest with you so I think we're, we're moving in the right direction we haven't nailed it all down yet um, we've got some stuff to do but at least we know what we're supposed to be working to now that's great thank you for that and I, I think you know out of this will come some some things that go towards what we're saying about transparency and getting everything right and doing the right thing so thank you everyone for that what am i asking my cabinet to um <laughs> vote on to marianne's recommendations right so we have the recommendations from scrutiny before us do i have a mover and a second there have a second thank you all those in favor Thank you. So that item now will go back to scrutiny then and we'll look for it coming back at a future cabinet. Thank you very much for, for that, Marion. And you can leave now if you want or you can stay. So item eight, am I on item eight? Yes, right. That went very quickly. We have exclusion of the press and public. This that members of the press and public be now excluded from the meeting during consideration of the following item on the grounds that the business involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12A 
to the Local Government Act 1972 as amended. A mover? Seconder? All those in favour? Thank you.